Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. As you settle into this live virtual space, um, my name is Sam Morielli. I use they, them pronouns. I'm currently um, sitting my buns on my couch uh, on the land of the Lenape people who have stewarded this space that I'm currently residing in, um, in what is now Brooklyn, New York. Um, I want to welcome you all um, to our third panel of the Prelude Festival um, called Black Imagination. Um, I'm super excited for this lineup of guests that we have for you. I'm super excited for this conversation. I cannot wait to learn from these leaders, makers, human shakers, um, all sorts of things. Um, this festival has been so tremendous um, thus far, starting last week, uh, going until this Friday. I hope you'll visit our website um, to continue checking out all that we have. It's preludenyc2020.com. Um, content every day, more stuff happening today. Um, and much of it is going to be available um, past this Friday. So you'll have opportunities to check out this panel and much more. Um, in the future. Um, I want to quickly thank um, the Siegel Center, um, the Siegel Theater Center for hosting us, um, the Martin E. Siegel Theater Center, let me really say that whole title, um, for hosting us, um, helping us make space for these artists, um, and to really interrogate uh, our theme, Sites of Revolution. Um, so without further ado, I want to welcome to the virtual stage our panelists for this conversation, Black Imagination. Hey, everybody. We can't hear you, Jalen. You need one thing unmuted. One thing muted and one thing unmuted. Oh my God. It's a great start already, really. You know, sites of revolution are about Messy beginnings. <laughs> I, thought, I thought we just met the whiz for a second. Yeah. <laughs> the whiz and he is the wizard. That's amazing. Oh man, thank, uh, <laughs> thank you everyone who's watching. Thank you everyone who is here on this uh, call um, for, for joining. Um, I'm Jalen Levingston. I am a, a storyteller, a director, writer, uh, sometimes I perform if I really want to. Uh, <laughs> and I've brought some of my favorite multi hyphenates with me to have a uh, just open conversation uh, around the things that are like really turning them on right now. Um, I, I feel like it is very rare in these times that Black artists can get together and just talk about being an artist, um, nerd out about the things that um, are setting us on fire artistically. Um, and so I wanted to create space for that today um, because also I was like kind of tired of using all of my vocabulary to like fix problems. Um, and so I want to use my vocabulary in a different way. Um, oh, amen. I, Okay, I mean, you, you all have done it, so don't even. Um, I want to just like popcorn it over to someone uh, for like a quick intro and check in of just like how you want to be identified today and what you do in the world. Um, and then we can jump into the conversation. So I will pass it over to Tracy. Oh, of course you would. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Tracy Conyer Lee. I use the She Series pronouns. I want to be known in the world as a lover of people and things and life. Uh, yeah, that's how I want to be known in the world. <laughs> in this industry, uh, I am a writer, performer, uh, I am a team player, collaborator, I, uh, a, a content creator, and coach. That's that's what I got. <laughs> Great. Was there more? No. Pass it to someone else. Oh, Biko, I don't know you as well. I would love yeah. to get to know you. What's up? I'm, I'm so honored to be in a, 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 a space with you. I saw your name. You know, the it last time I saw you was opening night at the Long Wharf. 
Um, Holy poop, the, yeah. One of the most amazing <laughs> world premieres I've seen in a very long time. That, that was a dope experience. Um, on the grounds of belonging. On the grounds of belonging. On the grounds of yes. belonging. Whoa, that play was amazing. Uh, I was like around the corner doing a workshop. I got to just pop in and see Right, that right. And come free party and all that. But the, the play, oh my God. This is it was my, a dope experience. That, that's my introduction. That's all I really need to say. On the grounds of belonging at Longboard <laughs> uh, was one of the best things I've seen in a very long I am Biko. You can call me that. Um, Jonathan. Hey everyone. Um, I mean, how do you how do you how do you how do you go after that? Um, uh, my name is Jonathan McCory. I use the he ham, spirits of she. Uh, I am multi hyphenated in multiple different ways. Um, I like to say that I'm a creative doula, so uh, that encompasses it all. Um, so it uh, allows me to show up as I want to, when I want to, and how I need to. So uh, yes. to be here, I'm happy to be in conversation with these light warriors. And yes. I'm saying to Jalen, there you go, Jalen. <laughs> um, what was I about to say? Well, I guess I, I want to start by saying that I think that the imagination is the most like radical political tool we have. Okay. Um, and that's the only thing I really wanna say about politics other than I do think that the imagination is the most radical political tool we have. And um, hopefully we have a conversation that gets to tickle our pickle around our imagination. And so the first and thing- And our nine pickles for those of us that ain't got pickles. I don't know how you define a pickle, Tracy. <laughs> delicious. I'm I not here to define delicious. pickles. <laughs> That is next this is going to be tomorrow. a crazy hour. Okay, sorry. Uh, the definition Keep of pickle. Uh, <laughs> uh, so the first thing I want to jump in with is just like a really light softball question of what's haunting you right now? Mm. What so is light. the thing so that light. is uh, keeping you up at night, that is stalking your hallways? What, what is the, the, the shadow? that you are in company with when other people aren't around that is finding its way into your work right now. And anyone can jump in and, you know, we can take the conversation in any direction we want, but that's, I want to start there. I mean, haunt, haunting is a, is a very interesting word because, um, because it doesn't, it, it initially made me think of Halloween and made me think of Scream and made me think of all those things. But then I also thought about um, haunting is also the thing that also could be energizing you. It also could be the thing that actually is giving you something to look forward to. Um, the thing that is actually um, itching you to do something positive or something that is shifting, right? It's a, it's a catalytic force. It's a dynamic force. It's a, it's a forward force. So when I think about that, I think about the notion of I'm haunted by the very, the very uh, need and desire to center joy inside of every action that I'm in. I'm haunted by the notion of how is joy being centered? How is joy being amplified? How is joy being rooted? How am I amplifying black joy in particular? How am I centering that? Also understanding that like I'm haunted also by the fact of um, uh, the invitation of um, not being able, like being forewarned not to go see my family for the holidays, right? That's a haunting, right? That's a haunting, the, 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 right. the, the, the challenging of joy in that moment of being like, I'm actually spending Christmas by myself. I haven't done that. What does that mean? What does that, what does that sensibility mean? Um, where, mm -hmm. how, do, how, do, how do I, when I know that I need that, that like that brings me so much joy. Um, how am I, how is my haunting or my quest for joy um, being challenged by this very real virus that is, can, that, that is, that is transforming um, my, like not like even my work life, my everyday life, my family structure, how I see my family, how I get to hold, be held in my family. Um, so I would say that's maybe haunting me, maybe like holidays. And then also thinking about because I am a cultural leader, like how does that, how does that then affect the people that I love, like the people on this, on people on this uh, Zoom right now? Um, how will we be affected by that? And how then can I produce work if I am gifted the gift to create space? Um, how do I produce work that works as an antidote for that dissonance that's going to be created by that very real thing of like, I don't want to transmit this. I don't want to be a transmitter of this disease to the people that I love, but I also don't want to be the victim of this disease as well. Why is joy not the same as happiness? 
Oh, you want to go down there? You wanna go down? I was, well, I, I mean, was, if we're going to use those words, you know. <laughs> I was thinking about even just the normality of joy or lack of normality of joy and like what mm -hmm. that is to people and even the attempt to like institutionalize it and what that might mean for some people and others and like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm not a, uh, it's where I was going to say something different, but I, I really do want to piggyback the joy thing a little bit, just because it's like, it's something I, I struggle with often. Um, whether it's like, and it's usually either on the like, how do you find more happiness and how do you allow more happiness? Mm. Um, and, and as artists, I know I fall into a trap of sometimes we, we think the work is happiness. Uh, and and then once the work is over in times like these or whatever, you know, and then you're like, oh, I, I thought I was doing all this work. So I was in this space with all my peoples. And but but as soon as all of that was subtracted, I'm, I'm not necessarily where I want to be. So, mm -hmm. so just trying to, you know, just trying to like, you know, really figure out what those things mean and, and how to sustain. The, the work required to sustain them, uh, especially in these times. You know? Yeah. I'm not yeah. going to elaborate on this extremely <laughs> because it's nobody's business. <laughs> but what I, I've, what Biko just articulated is something that I think I've been trying to wrap my own language around Mm -hmm. or I should say the antithesis of it, because what this time did in erasing so much of what I thought gave me happiness, so much of mm -hmm. what I thought gave me joy, I have really determined in this time where my joy does live and that it does live. Um, mm. I, I, this has been a dark time for everyone but it, is, it has been such a, a, a healer of my life in terms of making things very clear, making what is good about my life very clear in a way that, and I'm not saying art, but my career is finally secondary to my life. Mm. I discovered that during this time. Mm. Mm. And just to uplift your uh, question that you had, Jalen, around what it, what the between um, the difference between happiness and joy, um, I I, will, I I equate it between. I was thinking about it. It's like saying thank you and saying and and then also saying ashe. So happiness is like saying thank you. It is a it it is a it is it it, it it can supply itself. It tells you it tells you it gives you a greeting. It is rooted in the moment of now. Um, while ashe and joy are rooted in my personal opinion, a blood. A blood conversation of ancestral memory. It is a it is a deeper <laughs> sense of knowing. It's a deeper sense of being. Um, joy is rooted in a more complicated sense of also of how it shows up. Right. Um, um, joy can be rageful. Joy joy can be joy has a joy doesn't have a romanticized notion to it. But even though we try to romanticize it, um, mm -hmm. joy is also a, an elixir in my mind of actually thinking and activating your third eye to imagine a different future, imagine a different space. Um, same thing with, for me, when I think of the word ashe, which also means thank you, yet it is a deeper sense of a thank you um, that is rooted in um, an African uh, diasporic tradition, that is rooted on a legacy tradition, that is actually bringing you back to the motherland, back to home, and putting your two feet potentially in a space called home. Um, and allowing for you to then call on that power to move you forward. So mm -hmm. I just want to say that for me, that's where the two live as two dissonant spaces. Um, both are both are equally as important, yet both have deeply different um, points of access. And I, for me, have a deeper sense of being. Mm. I love that. Thank you for putting mm -hmm. some more meat on the box yeah. yeah. um, for that. And hopefully some people will be haunted by joy after <laughs> conversation. Um, Tracy, what's haunting you right now? I want to first say what is haunting me, what is keeping me up? Because you asked about if what is how haunt, yeah, yeah, what yeah. is haunting you is is affecting your your art. And I would say what is keeping me up at night is not 
what is uh, coming into my art. Um, I have found that the work that I have been creating during this, I don't, I, I don't only want to talk about this time as it, you know, uh, as it differs from the other times that we have been artists, but uh, this, I think this has been the light, light is the wrong, my work is lighter. The work that I'm creating, the new work that I am creating right now feels lighter than a lot of the work I have created um, as, a, as a writer or a content creator. Uh, that doesn't, as a performer, I still, I choose work that means something to me and that does something to me or for me um, in hopes that I can share what it does to me or for me uh, with others. But, but I, it, it, in terms of what I want to say right now, it is, it is much lighter. That's all I can really say. Uh, because what is keeping me up at night and I am, uh, I am going to bed often and not sleeping. Yeah. Uh, and have been more tired with as much rest as I get, have been more tired. Um, right. Than I have continually. And right now I am not ready to put that into my art. I'm very concerned. I have elderly parents who live on the other side of the country um, who, who have had some situations during this time. I'm very concerned. And uh, Jonathan, I am going to buck the odds. I'm actually literally trying to get out there for several weeks time. Uh, I'm not sure how that's going to happen, but I'm trying to put things in place because because I because I don't know <laughs> because I don't know and at least I'm I I need to create a, a some knowing in yeah. my life yeah, yeah, yeah. in a way that that isn't because because I also still live very much in phase one I don't know what's going on out there but I stay right. in these uh these Goodwill sweatpants <laughs> that are below the screen I stay in them at these slippers um I'm very much not I, I i'm i'm really living inside these walls i mm. I, I, I feel that i am but mm. i am not living outside these walls and i had to that i felt like making a big travel and sitting somewhere else uh with other people who have who have to live in a certain way because of their age and their health and and their circumstances it's going to force me <laughs> out outside of the the, the my bubble yeah, yeah, yeah. Has the art making process felt lighter as well? The art making, I, I can't, I wouldn't descri describe it as light. I would, I have been given the opportunity to learn so much uh, um, that I would not have sought out or been able to learn had we not been forced into new discovery because of mm. this pandemic. I, I, uh, in that way, it has been a blessing. It is some, it, I have learned things that I'm going to choose for myself, regardless of what the industry does. There are new things that I can choose for myself that I would have never discovered had we not been placed here. Yeah, go Jonathan. I mean, so I have, I have a question as you're creating work as a person, I, I just, I created something digitally and then it got released. And like, I just have to say that the not having the feedback loop, the not, mm. having, the not having the gathering made me feel very empty. Mm. And mm. it almost made me feel like this is um, like a masturbation than, mm. it is, than it is a um, gathering. Um, and I just realized that this digital psychic distance that is showing up, meaning that I rehearsed this way <laughs> we edited I only on the computer and over the phone and FaceTime and all this ingenuity showed up. But then when it came time to show it, I was by myself showing it to myself and I had been stuck in it. And then no one really there to give feedback. No one really there to give me that friction that allows me to understand, oh, and not even what's good or bad, and like what impact did it give on this planet? What was right. the impact? Mm. And like, I realized that 
that's why that's that's why like uh, film premieres uh, da, da, da. so i say all that to say as you've been creating new work and it's really for everyone but tracy you're talking about creating new work as you're in the process of doing that how is that how is that um culminating effect been for you as far as like when it gets released <clears throat> so i haven't had that experience yet uh because uh like as an actor i've done things uh, yeah. i've been zooming out and you have the and there have been a lot of conversations around the work that is being created online um but i will say i have had those experiences just as an actor where when the zoom room closes it's it's done and there and there isn't a discussion i the last reading i did this past week that was the case and the email thread of the art, there was, there was such a need that was left behind. And it wasn't right. even an original work. It was a, it was a play I had done before. Um, but then I, I, I don't do art. I, I, one of the things that is also haunting me is, yeah. uh, I shouldn't say haunting me, but, but the, the process is my, I don't care about the run. I say this all the time in the rehearsal process. I, we can open or whatever. I'm good after the first preview or the last preview. Uh, I The process, the, the, the day we sit down at the table for the first time and all of the work that goes into the journey to bring in an audience is, which is not happening. Uh, and even in a Zoom room, it's it's not, it, it is not the same, the exchange of energy, what you learn about yourself physically when you are together collaborating. Um, so not, just not being in, able to share this with other people, whatever the this is. Uh, uh, I kind of understand what Jonathan is saying. I'm really nervous now because I do have some things that are coming out that I don't, that yeah, especially when something is in development you need that feedback. I'm planning on watching um, uh, shoot, Death of the Last Black Man today, and I'm so disappointed that I didn't watch it yesterday. I couldn't watch it yesterday because I'm going to miss the q and I'm going to miss the live conversation and because that is what theater is for. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I feel like, and then I want to shoot over to you, Biko. I feel like if what you're making isn't addressing that thing that you're talking about, Jonathan, then it just like can't be theater. It can be awesome and dope and great, but like it actually can't be theater. And then conversely, in terms of like the process, if you cannot find a way to play within the process with people playing together, then it also is making something very different, um, which could still be valid and awesome. But I, I, I have found much more of like darker feeling emotions around not being able to say to singers, let's gather around the piano and just like figure it out. Like that's such a major part of, you know, what making was for me. Um, let's play this game where you run around and you do X, Y, and Z and let's just see. Can't do that on Zoom. Um, so anyway, I, I have felt a lot of like depression around like, but how do you play with people? I just want friends in the playground. Anyway, Biko, feel free to address anything you want. Uh, man, I mean, every everything everybody has been saying and it's uh, for, for a theater artist, you know, thinking about not being able to be on a stage again or anytime soon, you know, and thinking about the times you've been on stage and you've been in these spaces, what it has meant, um, sometimes what it's meant is, is it, you know, you have these experiences that you keep with you for the rest of your life, you know, and sometimes you have these experiences that, you know, you wish never happened and, and you know, but the beauty of it is you get to try again. Um, and now that that opportunity seems a little limited, uh, I, I think it can be a little, but I, I, I think people, we just got to remember it's like the long haul, you know, like stuff, <laughs> stuff is like really whack right now. Um, but I think all of these things and Zoom discoveries are things that'll just, they're just, they're, they're just more tools for the tool belt. Yeah. Kind of stack on and um, 
I just really hope when we do get back in these rooms together um, and we get back in these theaters that we really do come with the, the, the light and, and, and the blood and the ashe that we've been kind of demanding in theater's absence, right? And that we've been kind of conjuring uh, amongst ourselves and in these groups and in these Zooms. It's like, that's, to me, that's where the, the, the gold ultimately is. It's like, no, we're never gonna be able to do live, you know, so, but we're doing something. You know, trust, you know, my mom, every time she gets to watch a Zoom play or something, she calls, she loves it. You know what I mean? So something has happened. People are being reached. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's, it's always, you know, you know, that thing about how self-indulgent are you as an artist? You know, of course you want, you know, but ultimately it's not for you. You know, as some of our favorite teachers always remind us, uh, it's just not for you. It's not for you, your enjoyment, and none of that. You just gotta like do it, right? Um, but but I, I think it's like, I think it's all growing uh, to something bigger and better and everybody that's kind of like hanging on to it and hanging around to it, I think are, are just gonna kind of keep reaping the benefits of just staying in there, you know? Um, yeah. That's what's important, you know? What was the last piece of art, be it theater, TV, film, music, literature, you know, visual art? What was the last piece that you were exposed to that actually made you want to get up and create something? And why? I mean, I can start. I watch, please do, because I watch too much. I'm like, I gotta sit through all the ridiculous. Well, that's of so funny because, like, I right when I asked it, I was like, I'm literally talking to people who consume so much content all the time. Yeah, so but that's it's mainly because, like, I saw it a little bit kind of like golf style because I was like, I've seen so much. Like, I was about to say Kippo. I was watching Kippo on Netflix, and that in that Jones, that cartoon show is making me like want to great. Crazy. Also, like. I mean, also I've been grieving for our young, our, our, the, uh, any generation that grew up with Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I watched Grand Army and I pray for y'all. Oh my gosh, I just started yesterday. Oh, I watched the whole thing, Jalen. I watched oh, the whole thing. I grieved. Put that on my list, Grand Army. Yes, yeah. you need Grand Army. I watched, I, at the last moment, the la we'll talk about Kippo. The last moment of Grand Army like the last the last episode, I was crying because like, I felt like I had been with those students for an entire year. And I was like, y'all had to go through so much shit. I didn't even know Facebook when I was growing. Like Facebook wasn't even around. I didn't know Twitter. I didn't know Instagram. But y'all gotta go through some shit. Like I was like, let me give all y'all a hug. Like I'm just like- They make it real. It's so real. It is so <laughs> real. It is so, it is so, it is so real. And also the violence that, that, young girls have to go through mm -hmm. in high school, the kind of sexual violence that they go yeah. through, the kind of sexual space in which they like, like the amount of, it also made me think of the amount of women that, I, that I'm connected to and the kind of sexual violence that they probably have gone through that they never named, they never give voice to, but they had it as a younger age and they just don't, and there's shame around it or there's something around it. And it just made me really, really start to question how the space in which you, how do you create liberation, true liberation? So Kippo, Kippo um, has made me, um, what I love about Kippo is that it's a lovely, lovely uh, cartoon full of, I think it's like anime up to the max. Like it's like Pokemon meets X-Men come together kind of ordeal. Um, and this is, you watch this sober. I, I watch all this stuff sober. Uh, okay. But um, sometimes that's part of like whether I mean, or not yes. no, no, someone no, 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 should no, no. watch it. Yes. Like, <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. I mean, I, I, I'm very, I just said, just to be 100% honest with, I mean, transparent on this lovely thing. I am very mindful of when I do do, I, it's not that I don't drink, but I have to be very mindful because I've, uh, an addict, my, all the men in my family have a very addictive person, like addictive, have had an addiction. So I always have to be very mindful of the substances I take into my batai. Um, but I will say that Kippo and Grand Army have been wonderful shows. They bring the heat and also the love, um, and they're just creative. They're creatively imaginative, and what? And you're asking me what they wanted me to create. I have no idea what they want me to create, but they're making me aware of the present, 
the presence of a of this generation has to, what they have to face um, as far as potentially what they have to face when they are growing up. And then B, Kipple is making me really understand that like like the ways in which we are divisive um, and are, it's almost like in the way X-Men, if we remember those movies, they, yeah. really looked at, they really looked at the ways in which we create otherness and that how that otherness <laughs> um, is, is, is amplified and, and created as a status quo and so that we can have something to fight against. Yeah. Pick, pick, to piggyback that right quick, that's what I was gonna say when you first asked the haunting question. Something that I've been just musing over a lot is double consciousness. I think I even talked to you about this a little bit. Yeah, I was uh, teaching a class framed around it and we yeah, talked about it's just, it. It's just been on my mind heavy and just especially as we, again, with, with all these uh, new kind of uh, this new awareness that's happening in the, in, in the art spaces and, and uh, changes that want to be made and, and how we approach our work and the work and the minds with which we approach it. Mm. Um, and just, yeah, and, and kind of like our, our, our goals as, as artists, as activists, when those two things don't seem to intersect at all. Right. When they do, right. You know, and, and, and again, how that pertains right. to, you know, there, there was one question you asked me and how that pertains to double consciousness. I'm sorry, I got yelled at because I don't finish my sentences the other day. Um, <laughs> You ain't got you ain't you get you get be incomplete in your sentences. You know, I feel, I feel like you know what I'm saying though. Right. You know what I'm saying? You, you you know what I'm saying? But but I think but I think uh yeah, just trying to figure out like where we really really stand and and like you posed a question to me I think on the phone about like uh uh how do we exist beyond the white gaze and 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 things of that nature and what happened and, and one of the places my mind went was, you know, even the idea of being able to like take a whole entity out of an equation <laughs> might actually be a very European construct in and of itself. Right, right. Um, wow, yeah. And, then, and that's not to defend the white gaze at all, panel. <laughs> I, you know? <laughs> But 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 it just as you know, someone's like recenter the white gay. But it's just it's just so deep, like kind of where our minds go, where we let our minds go, go. Oh, yeah. You know the goals we set for ourselves, the parameters we set for ourselves. You know I. I I just really, again, I really hope, and I know people are already doing this work. You know, I'm, I'm, I, I didn't say it in the intro, you know, I act, I paint, I write. Um, but what I really look forward to is the movement work that brings the art back to the people mm -hmm. in a way that maybe it's even never been, but definitely closer to times when we had a more uh, stable and centralized movements, even mm -hmm. just one coming out of our community, uh, pre dope and just pre hyper uh, me, me, me consumerism culture, kind of like broadcasting on the scene, you know. I, I, I just feel like, right. and, and how we define these things and how we define our liberation, and, and you know. Yeah, something that's been really on my mind because every time I think I'm getting to a place I want to get, or I'm, I'm, I, 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 I'm like, oh shit, am I really working my plan? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or I'm really just reciting right. something I've seen already. I mean, it's also it's also awakening. Oh no, Trace, you go ahead. Mm. No. Mm -mm. <laughs> I actually was just going to bring up something that happened um, that I have since that has been weighing on me <laughs> and that I've had conversations about in a project that the three of us, Jalen and Jonathan, are collaborating on together right oh, now. And oh, I'm just going to I'm just going to drop names so that because I haven't shared this with Jalen, who was also in the room when it happened. But in in working on uh, retreat. 
uh, a, a we were going we were going through uh, the some content that that uh, an actor had a question about, and in my explanation of the content, I this is oh sorry this is all about the white gays and and its placement in in our institutions and in our art, but um, I. Uh, I had asked for an actor to lean into something, lean into a line. I said, because that is for my white audience. I, they, this line is for them. They need this line. Lean into it. Blah, blah, blah. And the illustrious Russell G. Jones, who, who is uh, uh, very smart when it comes to arts, and I like to listen to him, but he has actually effed me up because what he did was he asked me, uh, at a time when I haven't, when I wasn't thinking about that, and I, and what I've learned is that I don't think about this, because um, he was, he, he said, well, who is this play for? Is this play for the white people? Which stumbled, it, it, um, mm. and I wanted to say no, it's for black people, but, it, but I have never, mm. I, I don't put an audience. Uh, I, I know what audiences look like. I know what audiences of major institutions look like. I also know how they defer at National Black Theater um, in ways, but but also in general, my I, I write for the built-in audience and then for the audience that I that I hope is there for my work. And mm. in that way, w whether they're there or not, it's there for them. And I don't write for white people uh, because they are going, because I know they're going to be made up. They're going to be the audience largely. Uh, I, I have things to say to them too. Um, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it's, uh, I had never thought about, not that I hadn't thought about the white gays, but that, that really hasn't come to play for me. I would say as a writer, certainly as an actor. Right, <laughs> yes. right, right, right. Well, and that, and that also, that also, uh, so it ties in, I'm so glad that you spoke, Tracy, because it ties into a question that I had, or something that this uplift with Biko and then tie in, which is like, in our imagination, do we want to be healed? In our Black imagination, do we want to be healed? Are we centering healing in our Black imagination? Because if we are, then it's asking the question of how are we, like, how are we, how, how are we creating spaces for, for, for a white identified body to understand how they show up creates a violence or how they show up creates an ally or how they show up creates or how other black to black people, how they create anti-blackness or what where are places that they create anti-blackness or where are the places they create love. Like right now, because mm. of you, I don't know if you want people to know this, but it's like you, you find some food right now, bring so much joy to me, right? While we're right. having you know, you're in the kitchen doing something that makes us feel very familiar, makes us feel very much like home. Makes us feel very much like we are the kitchen sink as much as possible because for me that's where a lot of wisdom, a lot of love, a lot of a lot of a lot of history was actually shared. Um, so like so like it's just like in our imagination, do we even want to be healed? And I think and I, and I think that that is a clear that that it, in our black imagination, do we want to be healed? Because some people might not want to, as much as they might yeah. profess, they may not want to be. So that therefore their work is just causing violence, mm. or they may not be mm. able to. That's also I, true. I heard this uh, amazing quote by uh, Alexis Pauline Gums uh, today um, on a podcast. And I was like, <gasps> she was talking about revolution, but I was like, also, this is like why I think we should all be making theater and or any kind of storytelling. <laughs> and she was like, the revolution is about making people feel jealous for the life they deserve by showing them a piece of it. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you know, yeah. in the grocery store, just gas. Oh, because whoa. also contained within that are many different possibilities, yeah. right? Well, but the, like, the, that the, is the, the quote is make the revolution irresistible. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I love that I one. Who well. said that? But I think I think it's along the same lines, you know, mm -hmm. and and it's also. I forget it was it was something they talked about in the Panther newspaper of a lot of of like also like shaming the devil and and right. naming the devil you know that's why like I think our our comedians and our poets are also so important because it's like 
you got to be able to um, just show these people for how vile they are and show just all the contradictions and how utterly ridiculous they are. Mm. You know, um, and the more you can kind of shove that magnifying glass down somebody's throat, you know, the less ammunition they have to perpetuate this foolery, <laughs> you know, over. And I feel like that's, that is our job. But, 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 it, you know, I just want to, to go back to the healing thing that Jonathan was talking about. It's like, so in my opinion, a lot of what we call blackness is born out of whiteness. Right. It really is just a reaction. Mm. There is so much we need to learn about ourselves individually, locally, internationally. I mean, like every single tier of our own humanity uh, needs ample studying and 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 the reality of all of those tiers of our rea- you know have been systematically cut off misnamed misdiagnosed right. et cetera et cetera to keep us even more scrambled so we're expendable yeah. commodity right and 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 I just and 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 so it's like to 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 just I just always want to just dump double down on the the kind of work and maybe that's where I fuck up. Maybe it's not just a study thing. You know, it, it is talking, it is, but you know, it's just, it, we, we have so much work to do in really just clarifying who we are and what we want. Right. And, and seeing um, white supremacy and, and capitalism and things of this nature uh, clearer and not just yeah. these kind of uh, things that are just in one section of the world, but things that have permeated into our world as well. And kind of almost like, we don't even need white people to carry out white supremacy anymore. Oh yeah. And just sure. like a million, I mean, black people in a room doesn't make it a revolutionary room. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's why I love the, the phrase anti-blackness today over racism, not over racism, but just like, it's such a particular distinction that says very, very specific things that kind of speak to what you're saying uh, as well, Biko. Because we only have 10 minutes left on this phase of our conversation, though the conversation always continues. Um, I just want to throw out here, um, I'm interested in where do you all seeing your instrument go? Where are you seeing your instrument go? Um, Currently in the next year, I guess I don't really want to put a time limit on it, but just like or a schedule on it, but is there interesting evolutions in your instrument happening right now? I think I actually already answered it really yeah. briefly yeah. by saying that, that I have some tools, uh, or some beginnings of some workings that I am interested in exploring regardless of what this is. It made me interested in uh, uh, an opportunity to do some uh, writing for animation, children's animation, made me interested in telling children's stories. You know, I, I write adult That's themed stuff, but yeah. I had so much, it was something that I had to do and I didn't know I, I loved it so much <laughs> oh, that wow. I'm like, and, and T. Lee loved the kids. Everybody knows T. Lee loved the kids, but T. Lee wasn't creating for the kids. And uh, <laughs> Tilly wants to create for the kids. Everybody knows Tilly loves the kids. Love the kids. Love the kids. All the kids. <laughs> what else, folks? Um, I will say, I will say, where is my body leaning towards? I mean, my body is starting to really come, like, have an aversion. Like it start, it's my body actually physical location of my body because of this quarantine is starting to feel trapped in Harlem. Mm. Like like it's like it's not like someone said, do you want to go to uh, go to Eighth Street? I was like, what's Eighth Street? Like I was just like, right? <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> just like, it's like uh, that thing. I don't, that, I don't know that place. I don't know she. I know 110. That's the first I go. I know she. I know Eighth <laughs> Street. How you get to Eighth Street again? Because I haven't been able to bike ride in a while. I haven't been able to like uh, do like like because the only way that I was traveling during the quarantine months was actually on a bike. Like I would bike to where Brooklyn or X Y Z. But since the weather's changed, since it gets darker, much sooner, I haven't been biking as much. 
And I've been realizing that my my reality of New York has tr has shrunk into just Harlem. And so like mm -hmm. my body's been leaning towards this very localized expression of what of what New York can actually do. And I'm concerned about that actually. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because because I'm concerned about the how how will I then start to really start to branch out? When will I start to allow myself to branch out? Because there will always be something that could take my life. There always has been something that could take my life, and I still explored the world. There's always been right. something that my right. life. Right. Mm. The world. There was always something. There was always something that could that could make my make my last breath show up, make me not smile again, make me not. So what? So what a, what am I absorbing right now that's making my physical body have a different expression right. than ever before? Like I've always like like the police could have taken me out many times. Uh, the education system could have taken me out many times. The financial system, capitalism could take me out many times. Flying in this and flying in this country could take me out many times, but I still did it. I still figured out a way to have a conversation with the life that was that right. Was so I think that that's just something that I'm I'm really trying to wrestle with as I lean into this very localized expression of how I enjoy the city. Also what it's robbing me of that I think supremacy wants me to be robbed of. Supremacy mm. almost wants me to stay in one location. Supremacy doesn't want me to think the world is actually my oyster. Supremacy wants me to be a simplified version of myself. So how do I work against that and still stay in a space of courage and comfort and also health? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I totally resonate with that. Uh, Biko, what's your instrument doing? Whoa, my uh, writing, writing a little bit more than than normal. I used to write a lot when I was uh, a youngster, mm -hmm. and in this kind of confinement, it's it's mm -hmm. been coming back to me, uh, and in in a not so fun way all the time. But I'm trying to like really hammer through uh, and um, right. Because it is, it is something new, and it's like a new, it's almost like a new limb or an old limb coming back or something like that. Mm -hmm. so I've been really just trying to uh, exercise that. You know, I posted like a poem on my IG. Uh, the last, that's the last thing I did in a while. But like, I and I want to keep doing that. I hope to keep doing that. Um, just trying to like stay memorizing something, delivering something, <laughs> and you know, uh, what better. Thing in this space and time than to explore myself a little bit you know so that's kind of been something new for me and then of course just all these damn paintings and all that stuff you know yeah Same we love the painting. and what you doing um, Shane? what you doing <laughs> where is my instrument going um i feel a very um deep desire to be involved with work that is not trying to explain itself because I think it opens up a space of what I will call wildness. And I am very interested in investigating wildness and it's many different ways. Um, I think that like, this, this harkens back way earlier in the conversation where I think Biko, it was you talking about that kind of friction that can be between the artist and the activist. And like, I have always the deep desire to bring the work in very close proximity to the people, whether or not that is work that is socially conscious or involves my activism or work that doesn't. But in the activism space, there is a kind of wildness that an artist needs to be able to run to or escape from, I feel, in order to return to it in a certain kind of way or at least I'll just speak for myself, that I feel like I have to run to. And it's hard to find words for. It, it, it's, it's when mm. you pick out the play in three days and you haven't eaten and you haven't brushed your teeth. Like that, that is a version of that wildness, but it's also like, just like never, like when you shut down, you don't talk to anyone. Also, it's like when you binge everything, like where is, like that is so crucial <laughs> for me as an artist. And I'm trying to find, and, and I don't explain that to anyone. Like yeah, it just yeah, is what yeah, I. It is what it is, yeah. And how do I insert that into then the stories I tell of this mm. kind of just like feral art making that is uh, 
not less dangerous because the wild is more dangerous, uh, but at least allows me to, like you were saying, Jonathan, feel all of those different restrictions and do it anyway, or, or find a way to do it anyway, and to find a way to do it with love. Um, thinking about when you talked about how much of your world is wrapped up in that, Tracy. Um, I have been thinking about that this whole conversation, just about like, how do we just keep doing things that put meat on the bones of this concept of love, that put meat on the bones of this concept of joy and all that jazz. Um, I think we're at the end of this, which kind of sucks, but <laughs> I just want to thank you all for, uh, for talking with me, thirty seconds they say. Um, for the last thirty seconds, well, I just want to say, I want to plug this. I want to plug, plug Galen's essay on Black Theater Commons. If you have oh, read it, you should read it. it. It's really quite gorgeous. And while you're oh. at it, there's a series of essays you should also read. But Jalen's yes. we're talking about Black Imagination. We're talking about the space of Black Imagination. That essay is really centering that in a beautiful way. Your Thank blog you. work in general, Jalen, has actually been so. It has been very healing for me during this pandemic. All of the different places where you are exploring your own voice. Uh, it, it's been, keep writing for us. Thank you, sir. I, I, heard, I heard that, I heard that. Even the post, even the post, <laughs> all of it. Well, yeah. Um, thanks y'all, love you all. I don't want it to end either. <laughs> I'm so, Ashe, truly, 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 thank you all so much for your time here. And I'm, uh, I'm thinking about what you said earlier, Jonathan, of like, what is the difference between a masturbation and a gathering? Um, and you know what? First of all, you all deserve a masturbation of any sort, any sort of pleasure that you can have. Please, you take that. Second of all, all of the energy that makes this a gathering that you needed from an audience, let me tell you, I was living <laughs> across the Zoom screen. I hope you all found energy with each other. I'm so grateful for all the Always. people that you invoked, all the thoughts that you invoked, all of the lineages you that, that you invoked. I'm just truly just like sitting here in speculation. Um, and I think the one thing, uh, first of all, I had to control myself not to like jump into the conversation every single moment because I was like, I want to talk about that. I want to talk about, everybody needs to go watch Kipo and the Age of the Wonder Beasts. It's truly about like spe black futures. It's about mixed futures. It is about liberative futures. And I love, um, we're going to plug, please everybody, the, all of your work, Jalen, on our website, we'll put it to this panel. So if you're interested in finding those blogs, please check out our website. Again, preludenyc2020.com. Um, and I'm just, yeah, I'm super grateful for all of you. So thank you. Thank you for spending time with us today. Um, I hope you'll enjoy Thank you, Sam, for curating this. I'm just producing it. Shout out to Miranda for pulling you all together, I know. Yes, Miranda, um, we love yes, Shout out, shout Thank out. Thank you. Yes. Um, all right, y'all, we're going to close out the Zoom in a moment. Thank you for watching. If you are still um, at home, we have more events tonight. If you want to continue imagining futures, our next panel at 6.30 tonight is called Get Rid of the Gala. Um, I'm really oh my God, yes, please. to say. Um, we have a show at 8 p.m. called Weltschmerz. And then, as always, we will be ending our night with May and Tio in a meditation space. Um, so thank you all for coming. Thank you for listening to this amazing panel. Watch it again. It's going to be on our website for a moment. It's on Facebook. It's on HowlRound. I can't wait to watch it again and take crazy notes. Um, and I think that's that on that. Uh, all right, y'all. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.